love them or hate them, Secret Layers have proven to be one of the most prolific avenues for wizards to introduce new art, new flavour text, and even new lore into the game in a way that doesn't need to go through a mainline set. And whilst their contribution to the game as a product is a constant source of debate, the creative space they provide is undisputed. With the latest announcement consisting of a whopping five separate drops, there's a lot of flavour to get through. So let's get to it. Welcome to Magic the Flavoring, the Magic the Gathering podcast. We talk about all things magic, flavor, design, and lore. My name is Andy Mann. Hello, this is Nathan Cancel. And we are going to be talking today about the latest secret lair drop. <laughs> oh, sorry. Secret <laughs> lair drop. Sorry, I do apologize. Um, yeah, I was shouting about it a bit too much. Um, but also, I say a secret lair drop because it wasn't a secret lair drop. Mm. It was fucking five. It was forced to go down our throats like vegetables on Sunday. So, so <laughs> May 26th, there were five secret lair drops. And I was, I was as I usually am, on social media, browsing through Magic social media. And there were a bunch of all these alternate artworks popping up. And I was going, oh, this is interesting. Is this a secret lair? And then, no, it was five. And there were all mm. these announcements and people sharing this, that, and the other. And it was just, yeah, it was a bit of a crazy time, to be honest with you. Yeah, because I remember that you first um, gave me a poke for them. And I was like, I, I, because... I'm not going to lie, there is a certain degree of difficulty sometimes in getting all of the information collated at once. And I, I, was, I was at a point where I got one one of one of them and then one of the other ones. And I didn't realise that the birds was more than just Birds of Paradise. So that, but beyond the initial confusion of, wait, wait, what is actually in these products and what, what, what's happening with them? Um, yeah. yeah. It did feel like Wizards just went, here, here have, a, have a load of stuff, have a load of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe you like, might, might, maybe you'll like some of it. Um, yeah, for sure. I'm, 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 I'm Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, I was, I was just going to timestamp this episode saying that we are recording this on the 29th yeah. uh, of uh, May 2020. Um, so by the time this comes out on the 30th of May 2020, this will already be out of date because I'm going to guess they're going to probably release another 50, 52 secret layers by the time yeah, this exactly, right. so, yeah, because yeah. These, drop, these drop from the 1st to the 4th, I believe. 1st uh, to the 5th, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th. You can only get yeah. one day each. So yes. That's the other thing as well. It's not even like you have a week to prepare for each one. Or say, for example, your bank balance. Like if you wanted all of these, because um, this is a very minor thing I hadn't really thought about, but you've got five days, basically, to get all five of them. And yeah, you can buy them as one big package still. I think you can get all of them plus a fetch land for £170. Obviously, this is just what they're saying it's going to come out. Yeah. Um, who knows how much it's going to be? If I could if I could reasonably pick these up for £30 a pop, like they're saying some of them are, um, I'd be very happy. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, yeah, for sure. But obviously, inflation happens. But yeah, the fact you can, the fact you've got such a small window to get these, and it's like basically now, it's happening now. It's very. Um... I mean, that's that's like a marketing strategy, isn't it? Yeah. So just just to yeah. clarify what this episode's about, so we're following on from uh, last week's very cool episode with uh, Vorthos Mike, where we were talking about a lot of alternate artworks that are coming out in mainline sets, and obviously we couldn't talk about that without talking about some of the different artworks you find in products like Secret Layers, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then. This <laughs> mega drop happened. This five uh, product drop happened in one day, and so we thought, well, this is just a natural sign of providence that we need to talk about some secret layer stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it is worth noting. I know I spoke to you about this when we were kind of writing up this episode, Nathan. I'm going to say it for everyone who's listening now. Um, we know that there is a lot of controversy and mixed feelings and continuing um, sort of minutia surrounding the product of Secret Lair, like how it's sold, the costing, the kind of cards they include, all this kind of stuff. Whales causing issues globally once again this time. It's yeah, like, sure, but then like, <laughs> I mean, without without trying to sound like a weird arsehole about it, like whales are people too. Like there's a whole yeah. different bunch of stuff going on. Um, what I will say now is that this episode and i mean kind of this podcast as a a whole kind of thing we're not really going to concern ourselves with all of that stuff that's Mm -hmm. not to invalidate people's ideas or frustrations with secret layer because i mean i personally hold some i don't know how kind of angry you are about secret layers um in general I, I don't it's one of these um, we talked about this last week about um the, uh, of the difference between like exclusivity and availability and i feel like we're going to get onto this um there is a big difference between things like this um and what we're going to talk about today um and say like say the fetch land uh, secret uh, i don't i don't i don't want to muddy our opinions into like the political side of it one way or another because i think it's that both sides have arguments and realistically my biggest statement is always you can't get angry about more product what you can technically get angry about is if it pushes people away but i mean you know that's a, that's a big ass conversation for another day sure. and that is you know it's a valid concern and there are a million of valid concerns and the counter arguments to those concerns which yeah. are out there which people as consumers and as magic players and as supporters of lgs's or people who don't have an lgs and all they can get mm. things through is online services that is for individuals to kind of suss out themselves however 
something which I kind of feel, and I know you agree with, is that the secret layer products are probably one of the most prolific ways to get out alternate arts, new printings ah, of cards, sadly. new flavor text, lore and flavor. And so that is what we're going to concern yeah. ourselves with today. And we're going to be talking specifically about the five that dropped uh, this week. But obviously, it'll be in the context of all secret layers that have been dropped. Um, so I think we should just probably jump straight into it. Yeah. So nice. yeah, take us away. So yeah, we've basically got, we've got five of them. We're going to talk a little bit um, about all of them. Um the, the the initial one we're going to talk about is the mount. We're going to start with what I think is like um, the most basic one, like the most obvious one, and that's the lightning bolt one. Um, I've got two very big issues with these products um, from the get go, and that's naming conventions. This one's called um, for the one that's basically it's four different alternate artworks um, foiled um, of lightning bolt. Um, this is the first time the card has got a full art treatment that also has text on it. So we've got two textless promos that have come out over in the mm-hmm. past years. Um, we've had some that um, are, say, championship, um, like the World, Play- uh, World Player Championship um, editions, full, say, full size, for example. They do obviously the reprint in M10, blah, 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 blah. Um, this is the first time we've had a full art that has text on it. So for those that don't necessarily want to, they still want to see what the card does, but they want that extension on the artwork, amazing. If you want to have four different artists for it as well. Um, the only thing I really don't like is they call it Mountain Go. Yeah. Instead of Mountain Pass. Yes. Do you know what? Yeah. Okay. Mountain Pass would have been a kind right? naming convention. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mountain I've got Pass. Three, I've got three sure. of these for today, by the way. Um, <laughs> but it's fine. It's okay. Um, marketing aside, um, this is the twenty ninth to thirty second printings of Mount of, of of Lightning Bolt. So for those collectors out there that have every single one of the three different World Championship editions, so these are the ones that have mm. the gold border that are signed by the person who won with the deck. Um, they have the mm. the the. the off oversized one that you see at um, Grand, uh, Grand Prix and Magic Fest, the things that you can buy for tickets, uh, or if you have all the money going by them. So yeah, 29th to 32nd printings. Um, <laughs> but the fact that this is the first time you can have a play set of different arts that are all full art um, is quite important, I think, because a lot of them can feel very mismatched if you play like lightning bolts from alpha or beta the artwork is significantly more muted than say like the M10, M11 versions were. Um, saying that, uh, one by one, these artworks are fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah, they are really, really cool. Um, so obviously, again, we're doing another art podcast where we're talking about arts that you can't mm. see on our audio version, but they are out there. They are out there in the world, right? So, you know, just fucking click on whatever yeah. device you're listening to us and go yeah. on Google and look we'll, at them or we'll any other. We'll eventually searching. figure out a way to do podcast charades. Um, <laughs> it'll work somehow. Yeah, but today sure. is not that day. <laughs> Today is not that day. Um, but yeah, these artworks are pretty cool. And yeah. also the um, the full art treatment that they've given them is probably my favourite style of full art. Yeah, where I agree. It's not, it's not borderless, necessarily, and it's not um, textless. It's got the text box that's transparent with the borders that are usually there on text boxes and mm-hmm. things, with the artwork showing through from behind. And to, for me, if I was going to find any art style that I would rather they just carried on with pretty much forever, which I wouldn't ever do, but if I had to pick one, it would be this one for yeah, sure. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah, not only do you maximise the amount of um, space that you get to, like you know, have a, have have the image and 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 the, and the artwork, but you also still get the text. So it still feels more like a typical magic card. The only thing that irks me is the fact, obviously, that the, the text is black and white. Um, but I think I could find an OCT issue with any single magic card. So I think that's a bit. Oh, what well, you mean black at the naming? It's in white in the text box. Yeah, but at the same time, obviously, when you have it in your hand, it's a, a, aesthetic, a, a minor aesthetic hang-ups aside. Um, just just looking at these from um from a directional point of view, I think clearly all of the artists got told a similar kind of remit because the framing for all of them is quite similar. But it shows how you get give four different artists the same kind of remit, and they can give you back four very different, equally stunning bits of artwork. I mean, that's something I really like because this is uh, this secret layer drop is in the the same vein as the Serum Visions and as the Thalia mm-hmm. secret layer drops, where they have where and for me this is one of the things which I think Secret Lair does really well. I mean, Secret Lair, this is a tangent again. Secret Lair as a product, one of the pros of it is that you can never say, oh, that was a wasted Secret Lair, or that was a Secret Lair which I think didn't live up to the sort of um, spirit of Secret Lairs, because the whole point of them is that they are different products for different types of players and different kinds of collectors, right? Mm -hmm. And this one falls into the Thalia Serum Visions version where it's people who would probably still want to play with a play set, so tournament grinders or people with, you know, sort of uh, 60-card constructed decks, but still want to have the premium artworks. So they have four different artworks in the same framing, as you said, Mm -hmm. and it's one of the things where I really like that you could put these next to each other and they do look like 
the same card, mm. but just with different art styles on them, as opposed yeah. to wildly different cards that you would have to go, oh, was that a lightning bolt as well? Oh, was that a lightning bolt as well? Yeah, These are all very clearly the same card, which yeah, I think they, is great. They do have, yeah, that, as you said, that tangent across all of them. They do feel like they are a collection. And I think this is the, perf- this is the, f- the first one, because even Serum Visions, I think, might not have the same ubiquity. Uh, ubiquity. Um, but this is the perfect marriage of... Um, having an iconic card that is also practically um, sought after. People play mm-hmm. play sets of this in um, uh, Blue blue Red Delver and, and, and various other formats, Pauper, everything. Like, this is a product that peop- a lot of people are going to want, whether they play Lightning Bolt, whether they like Lightning Bolt, whether they like playing Reds, whether you're Stephen Green and, and all you want to do is deal three damage to things. Like, yeah, I mean, this is a perfect example of something that people wanted and no one, no one can really complain about it. I don't think for this one. Yeah, um, for sure. And, and they did bring in. Um, we're going to talk about one by one. Um, they did bring in f- for pretty decent artists. I say pretty decent. <laughs> as if, as if, wow. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why I had to try. Well, oh, they're pretty it. decent. Yeah, yeah. They're I, pretty I, I, decent. I, I don't know why I tried to dial it down. I tried to dial it down, and then went, oh no, no, lord them up. I went for pretty decent, and they're they're all really, really good. What I mean is, Jesus. <laughs> why, why did I do that? I don't know. Um, anyway, so we start with um. What one thing that I do stand by is that all four of them have um, a subject matter being bolted. Um, mm. Now we're going to get onto why there isn't a bolt the bu- bolt the bird card because that is the typical thing that you do bolt the bird. Um, but we do have a knight, a bear, a drake, um, and a skeleton. We, we, it looks like a skeleton. It might be a human that's no longer got flesh. <laughs> because well, so you, yeah, one. you read it. So this is yeah the um, the Alexis Zirit card yes, um, artwork. So yeah, it shows it. It's a, it is a skeleton. So he's he's bolted a skeleton. But I think I read it as it's that classic classic cartoon thing where you have someone who gets electrocuted yeah, and you yeah, see yeah. a skeleton through their skin. But you read it as a literal skeleton with yeah. like a helmet or something, well, which looking- I think. Possible. Yeah, because I'm looking at the artwork and you can see an outline of this of the um of the garb that they were wearing, but we don't know if it was a skeleton wearing garb. Because you know, in magic skeletons still go around with fashion sensors. That's how it works. Yeah. yeah. Um. Um. But yeah, so I I don't know. I, I I asked him. I asked him on Twitter. I have no. I haven't got a reply yet. If I do get a reply back, I'll give you. A, I'll, I'll let you he know. Hates you. He hates you for calling him pretty good. <laughs> he didn't even no because I was I, I I went I went above and beyond on Twitter. I I I had to dial back my 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 splooshing. Because I out of the four, I think personally that's my favourite, just because of the stark contrast of the yellow. This is the colour palette I was talking about. So last week when we were talking to Vorto's Mike, I said what I really wanted was that colour palette which they use in things like early Watchmen and early Hellraiser comics, yeah. where it's the heavy pinks, yellows, purples to kind of um, substitute for real world earth tones and flesh colours, right? Mm-hmm. And we've seen it in a whole bunch of artworks recently. And this was before this drop came out that I said this, and I was like, I really want to see that more in Magic, and like a fucking sage whoever the art direction <laughs> was set they went i bet that guy from that podcast really wants to see this color palette more i'm gonna blow his freaking mind and yeah they put it in there like the alexis zirit one is is superb yeah alexis zirit is the first time he's done any uh, magic artwork same with bridget rocker was one of the one who did the bolt the bear i would have called them by whatever they're being bolted by they're the they're yeah, two, sure, they're the bear, yeah um, and then you also have uh, Robbie Trevino, who was did all of the uh, triomes of some of the um, artwork for the, mm. for the latest uh, Coria um, alternate artworks. He's bolting the Drake, and then we've got Noel Bradley coming back and doing yeah. his normal. This is, I mean, ever since he did those sorceries, the legendary sorceries, I've wanted to see these big epic moments. And the fact, oh man, honestly, he's and on his Twitter, he's so happy about the fact he's got to do a lightning bolt, and it looks so cool. It's, it's classic so cool. Noel Bradley, as you say. Yeah. It's like a, it's a big, wide sweeping um, shot, and it's using white light yeah. in it really well like people the- when people think of white light in a in a uh, painting for magic a lot of them jump to uh, uh, john avon mm. but noah bradley is the master the of the white light and it's yeah, this is- ruinous blast is a great example of it but this too it feels like fucking he-man you know mm-hmm. it feels like mm-hmm. it feels like he has the power um and yeah. then I, I kind of annoy that the nikes is the bolt the night one um because it is a dude on a horse at the top of a pinnacle getting a very bad <laughs> very bad day's luck um mm. i would have loved to have if he managed to sneak in a, a he-man reference into that that would have been amazing that's where i feel like ah. these ips you can blend ever so slightly but you can hint that maybe i mean i don't i, I mean obviously well that's, we'll be, that's we'll be talking about sure. blending of ips in well, the exactly yeah uh, right, so I mean, apart from um, that, the one of the things is these aren't always all of these uh, five. They have different treatments, and so some of them um, have different framing. We've already talked about the framing on this one of what we both agree is to be probably one of our favourites. All subjective, yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course, of course. Um, and then um, yeah, these are, these are going to be available in foil. Um, some of them will not be, um, and we'll talk about why. I think that's good. I think this I think this is a prime treatment for these products because you don't tend to see whiteboard and white text very often. Um, you don't get to do this extended artwork very often. Obviously, you don't do it too much, otherwise we'll get used well, to it. I mean. 
uh, collectively, even though they're all by different artists with different art styles, I mean, as you say, like there was the one by um, Robbie. Uh, I can't remember. Trevino. What's his name? Trevino, Trevino, that's it. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Robert Trevino, who did the triumphs. Is they are all still pretty comic book style, and I mm. think like the full arts from Akoria, um, I preferred those in non foil. Again, personal preference. I'm of actually course, a foil, yeah, yeah. I'm a foil fiend. I'll take anything in foil, but actually, I think the comic book style works better being a bit flatter. The only thing um, I imagine for these is that if they do, because obviously sometimes um, they just do uh, a foiling over the entire card, sometimes they pick up highlights. These are mm. really easy cards to highlight. If the only thing they foil, which I don't know because we haven't seen them, if the only bit they foil is the lightning bolt, holy nonsense, I would be so happy. If they mute the yeah. entire rest of the card and it's just the lightning bolt aspect that has the... the, the um, I think that they'd be missing a beat if they didn't do that. Um, right, so anyway, product two <laughs> um, out of five is um, The Path Not Travelled. Um, now, again, before we even get into the product, so... Fuck Robert Frost, apparently, because 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 it, it's it's road not taken or or less travel like the naming convention. Why, unless it's a copyright thing, please get it right. Please get. It but right. maybe 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 they don't want to use direct no, naming convention. Yeah, like and I do I do know the thing is that it's been used um in a lot of other psychology and things like that. Like so, and it might just literally be a copyright thing of where they can't call it that, and so they had to jimmy it a little bit. Sure. I mean, the man, the man died in 1963. I don't think yeah. it's fair to say fuck him for any real reason. No, 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 no. Is it, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it, I just, I hope that it was a deliberate oh, right, avoid, okay. I hope they, like... they avoided the copyright instead right, of them garbling his, that's, that's, that, because as soon as I saw it, I was like, wait, that's not right. And for me, especially if you're going to be like um, a marketing um, a, a, a executive for Wizards, I'd want your, I, I think naming conventions are probably one of the most important things. You know, what you name your sets, what you name your products. And some of these are very, very good. Again, Mountain Pass would have been much better than Mountain Go, but at least well, I right, okay, so it going for. If you, right, explain what the secret layer is, and that naming convention might make more sense, though. Yeah, cause, yeah of course. Yeah. But anyway, so this is um, basic four um, different planeswalkers um, that have been given um, cosplay... Uh, in- interpretation treatment. So basically, they've taken um, four different cosplayers that have um, reimagined the characters from our game. Um, they've put a little twist on it themselves, and then with that, they've got artists to then take that um, that cosplay and then put that into the artwork, um, which is amazing. Except the, the thing I like about this one is it's taking multiple facets and multiple aspects of our um, community and it's celebrating them all together. It's taking Okay. Yeah, the magic card. Okay. Yeah, cool. Tammy is a cool card or whatever. But taking a cosplayer and then a, a, and an artist that might not have done very much artwork and put them both together onto a card. Or, or so like, sorry, sorry. The, I was under the impression that these were cards, ideas that they had, and then they gave cosplayers the the art ahead of time to make a cosplay out of it. Is it the other way around? So the I, cosplayer did it oh, first. Oh, because I thought I, I've seen the Tamiyo field research. I've seen that with the hat and everything. I've seen that way before this happens. Way before this happens. So. Um, I'd be interested to find out because in my the way that I saw it was, I mean, it's it's still the same thing because it's still the same idea that they yeah, give exactly. cosplayers yeah, yeah. um, kind of a lot more ownership over over the game than maybe they would have before because they are a a massively like powerful outward source of creativity for Magic as a game, right? Mm. I mean, they're, they're at Magic conventions and Magic fests and Command fests, whatever, alongside the artists of the game and some of the pro players. The cosplayers are the ones that really make this feel like a, a large community, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, especially when we went to Magic Fest, we were blown away, weren't we, by the... By oh, the yeah, sure. Fest, I mean, Nissa, Nissa Cosplay was playing uh, Kazmina, was one mm. of them. And yeah, that was just phenomenal to, to kind of point out a highlight. Um, but uh, I was under the impression that these were that they gave these artworks to the cosplayers ahead of time. Uh, to cosplay. They, they reimagined them, and then they've okay. So I've been because I did a load of um like looking into them, and obviously ch- checked out all their tweets and everything. But I couldn't see them saying whether or not they had to come up with the idea beforehand or not. That'd be something maybe to ask. See, I, I th- interesting. It's, yeah, it's only because know. yeah, it's only because I've seen the uh, the Olivia Gobert Hicks. So I, I, I'd, I'd seen that picture of her with the pi. Um, so but, but let's let's get into them because we'll we'll go by one, one by one. The reason I really yeah, like sure. them is because it does take magic and it puts it more in the real world. Um, so basically you've got four, you've got f- uh, Vraska Golgari Queen, um, which is basically being reimagined as a prom queen, which is, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh amazing. Uh, this is, uh, Manju Elise, um, yeah. and then the artist, um, was Mark, um, Mark Uz- U- Uziel, Uziel, I'm sorry, it's like, it's like Azriel, but with a U, and I can't mm. remember. But anyway, he did the explosion sounds, um, secret layer, the one with the goblins, so it's a little bit more... Mm. Um, cartoony based, um, like it's, it's a little bit more like Fortnite um, artwork, um, without using a word that might get me into trouble. <laughs> um, but it doesn't come through too much on this. But what I love is this idea of where you have of where she took over, and it's, it, she didn't get put up because it's like you know, democ- um, um, how um, fucking uh, 
monarchy's work or whatever it was a yeah it was a pageant yeah, they had a pageant and she's the swarm at uh, the swarm form what well, that is amazing take taking magic and putting it in real world s- silly situations like yeah so, so my favorite thing about ravenica is knowing it has coffee um that to this right. day is one of these things it grounds it in something that i can actually get my teeth into and be like okay now i can start to accept sure. it as a potential reality um, i mean it was a it was a smart move as well giving that um that release to manju as a cosplayer because she almost exclusively does cosplays of characters designed by Megali Villeneuve and artwork yes, designed by exactly, Megali Villeneuve. Yeah. And the fact that um, Vraska during uh, the latest Ravnica set um, has was heavily designed and heavily influenced by Megali and mm-hmm. the, the kind of work that she did on that set. So it was a very cool move giving this um, card, this character, to a cosplayer so synonymous with the artist as well. Mm-hmm. It really shows that Wizards, at least someone at Wizards anyway, has a real kind of finger on the pulse of cosplayers, mm-hmm. even though they've not always treated them the best in the past, or at least as well as maybe some people think they should have mm-hmm. been treated. Um, they are now starting to realise, oh, holy shit, there's a bunch of creatives that... Mm-hmm. I mean, Olivia Gobert-Hicks is on the CAG for Commander, for fuck's yeah. sake. Yeah, These these people are, are choosing to be living advertisements of your yeah. game. Like, yeah, they yeah, are yeah. personifying your game <laughs> Like, if you're not going to celebrate these people, I don't know what the hell you're doing with your company. <laughs> um, mm. And obviously, from a uh, business point of view, I think they love it because again, it, it does it just creates a community and environment. And people, anyone that's into any kind of nerdy hobby kind of thing, will always say that when a community is 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 um, is, is coming together and celebrating, it, it is such an amazing feeling. Um, so yeah. yeah, that's that's the underlying thing for this. Um, moving on to the Tamio one, this is uh, the private <laughs> a private investigator version um, from um, Olivia Go Hicks. Um, the artist being um, Yong Hao Han. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that quickly, assuming that I've cr- pronounced it correctly, and we're gonna Yong Hao Han. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, mm-hmm. He's on, he's on other artworks as well. He's not he's not a new art, um, artist, but I think this is really good. Again, I, I want a buddy cop. I want, I want all the buddy cop films basically done in magic. I love this idea of um, Tamio going around as a private investigator. You know, in like L.A. Noir, like an L.A. LA Noir style of Tamio. Oh, beautiful. She's dressed in the in the kind of trilby hat. She's got the big trench coat, like the yeah. big sort of fascia coat. We would call it in the UK. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, don't, don't put flashing and Tamio in the same sentence. She's got kids, Andy man. She's got kids. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to make a magic joke about Flash and how that would be broken. Oh, okay, good. Oh, damn, damn. Uh, wait, can we, we can edit this. We can edit this here. We can edit it. In. It's fine. <laughs> no, I won't do that. Cool, good. <laughs> um, moving on. Um, so we've got um, a reimagining of Domi Raid. Mm-hmm. Um, this is uh, from a um, little bit. Sorry, I've lost my place in, 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 in the world. Tappy Toe Claws. Tappy Toe Claws, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. she's um, so she's playing a um, a wrangler, a, what I call him Boar Wrangler. Uh, he's basically like on a rodeo. And what I like about this is that his initial, this is the OG Domri, um, the, um, not either of the ones that have come up recently from the War of the Spark or Ravnica Allegiance uh, sets. Um, but it has him on a boar, which ties it into the other cards because all of the mm-hmm. recent bo- um, Dom- Domri cards always have boars in them somewhere. And it's the only one that didn't really seem to have one. So to do that, and also I love I love the cross I love the um the uh, cross gender aspect of it as well. Of where you don't just have to have women playing women, you can have women playing men, you can have men playing women. Like it it, it works. Um, Tabby Toe Claws does a lot of um uh, male characters as well. She's very well known for things like Jace and things like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. oh, um, Ral Zarek. Yeah, she's a big Ral Zarek exactly, player. Yeah. As well. Getting getting a selection of characters, both male and female, is very very good for the game. Speaking of which, um, someone who is neither te- like <laughs> human, male or female, we've got a Jani Steadfast, um, who's been um, reimagined um, by Jackal Costuming. Um, now, what I like about this one is it was given to David Raposa, um, the artist, and he's gone like full nineties comic style with it. Mm-hmm. He's gone, yeah, Rob Liefeld, Rob yeah. Rob Liefeld style of lots of pouches, lots of buckles, yeah. which. On superheroes makes no sense because no, why do exactly. they need them? like yeah. it was he he was um sort of classic uh, X Men like Cable and things like that and none of these characters need a bunch of fucking pouches like Cable maybe because he needs like ammo yeah he's but, like in the future gave, who knows what he needs <laughs> but, like they gave like Cyclops in that era like a utility belt and it's like dude has a laser for a face like I don't think he needs like <laughs> mirrors around, mirrors like, it's gun. all mirrors no like, mirrors so we can set yeah, them up sure. around the room so he can hit you from whatever angle yeah but this yeah you're right so yeah this <laughs> Johnny this Johnny said fast is mm-hmm. uh, is kind of imagined with that yeah, yeah. that big big muscles big costuming mm. um and also a little bit of thundercats yeah well this is the thing this is the thing i, th- I the only thing that annoys me about this is you got the a for your journey on the on the on the breastplate um badge which kind of gives an avengers feel why they didn't do a thundercat i mean again maybe it may be an ip thing you're not allowed to do it without you know direct well they couldn't have done literally 
Yeah, but I wouldn't have minded a little like lion head on there because not only would it have hearkened to Thundercats, but obviously he's also a lion. Obviously, he'd given him a white mana symbol. Also, now we now we know that in world they know what the mana symbols are for their own. No, no, no. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. No. Okay, fine. No, don't be like. I understand what you mean. Like if he's got a belt <laughs> with the white mana symbol on it, but then we have to fucking admit that Domri knows what a cowboy hat is, and well, that this Tamio is the- knows what a so, trench coat. Is. So. This is good. Coming back to this, this is one of the things that I got at the back of this. Um, and all I have at the bottom is basically, um, imagine, so Ravnica has, um, everyone knows that Planeswalkers is this and Ravnica. It's basically like a hodgepodge of all the different planes. If you go to a different plane, say the cowboy plane or whatever, and you find a really cool hat and you bring it back to Ravnica and then everyone goes, Rav, and Ravnica goes, oh my days fashionista. Like how are Planeswalkers not running the fashion scene? Because they're bringing back all these amazing designs. When got, look, Vraska literally came back and then went, fungus dress, absolutely. Let's change the entire swarm to look like this. Like I think we're underestimating the amount of influence planeswalkers would have on 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 society, <laughs> Ravnica for trends. Because you could literally just bring back anything. That's how the world used to work by trade. I mean, you start you start pulling in that thread, Nathan. Then you're going to start wondering how people don't literally freak out when a giant cat busts in or when Tybalt <laughs> busts into a new plane. Yeah, I know, like I they know, do a little bit. They go, "Oh, what a crazy creature this person is!" But they literally don't try and kill it on sight. Yeah, I know, I know. No, I know, I know. For me, it's more this idea of I'm looking at Domri going, man, I wish I was the first person to wear cowboy hats to Ravnica. Like, everyone would love me. Um, so, so, so um, this, these are they also available in foil. These ones are foiled. Cool. Um, so the next one's the um, Ornithological Studies. Um, this one I actually think secretly is my favourite. Oh, really? Know, I don't know why. There's something about it. That, I mean, and this is no offence to, to anything about the product because there's something very simplistic about it. I love, I like the fact that um, so this is basically five different iconic bird cards. Um, and having looked through the rest of them, um, these are the five most iconic bird cards. They haven't really missed anything. So I tried to look for like, oh, do they really omit, 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 omit anything? Augury Owl is a card that people used to play, Thieving Magpie. Stormcrow was obviously that joke card that they were going to do for the sequel that never came out with Mudhole and Squire or whatever. Um, Good. Do, you go for, do you go for Legends like Derevi or Kakar? No, none of, these are ba- none of these are iconic enough. So they did get the five best ones. Um the five ones being Dovescape um, with two turtle doves on it. What I like about this is turtle doves are naturally white and blue and the card's white and blue. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Very clever. Uh, Belfield Strix. Um, you've got basically Great Horned Owl um, that's on there. And these are all very um, realistic, real world earth versions of, 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 of the animals. You've got um, a typical white domestic goose. Um, you've got the actual bird of paradise. And then you've got a typical normal white swan. Um, for well, Gilded like, Goose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you basically you got Alan oh, Douglas. Swan song, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Alan, Alan Douglas did uh, the Gilded Goose, Belfast Strix, and the Swan Song. Um, and then uh, our video cards and cards and egg cut 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 oh whatever. <laughs> God, you sound so <laughs> oh angry. God, I'm so bad with names. So don't get me wrong. I'm trying to read something that's like 0.8 on 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 a scale, and my eyesight's good. Cartagena, Cartagena, Cartagena. I'm going to go with Cartagena. Cool, good, fantastic. Cool. Anyway, um, the thing about these is that it's really like, um, because it is more real world and it's more minimalist style, it does literally feel like these are pictures out of a fucking encyclopedia. I feel like that's the reason why this works for these, because these aren't like, they don't pop. They're not big, explosive, powerful cards that are going to make um, new players invest in sets. Like, you don't look at Baleful Strix. At the, I wouldn't want that to be the first printing of Baleful Strix. Um, and also, notably, these aren't in foil. So they've gone to right. it. They've done the basic normal, um, normal, normal border. They haven't gone for anything super fancy. They haven't gone for any textless. They haven't gone for any um, full art or anything. It's a nice, basic, simple card reimagining. And this one, it's that simplicity. It's taking almost like magic back to its like its little its roots. It's like going back uh, back home for mums for some stew. You know, and that's, that's one of the things I really, really like about this. Um, well, it's why when they do like things like giant spider and in, in earlier sets, it was literally just a giant spider, yeah, it's yeah. like a monster spider or something. And it's like it's like trim all the bells and whistles off of the cards, and, and what do you still end up with a nice little bit? And sometimes you forget that it is like I used to like some cards just because it looked cool as a bit of artwork. I don't care if it was a fucking good card that I could win with. Like, yeah, mm. okay, these are iconic cards that you want to play, and this is part of why the sequel there works for them because again, it cuts that difference between cards that I want to play and treatments that I want to see. Well, um, this is this is why when you were asking like why didn't they do legendaries and why didn't they do these other yeah. cards or joke cards or meme cards or whatever else, it's because I think this is where I think as as secret layers go, these five, if you're going to look at just how the product functions the best, I would say these are really good examples because you know the lightning bolts or whatever else people want to play them, and as you say, these are just nice staple cards mm. and even like newer ones, like they they're not all classic cards because you yeah, have like, gilded goose, yeah, in gilded here. goose literally. You know 
Yeah. Exactly. You know, and each one of these cards you could slot into any number of decks in any number of formats. Mm-hmm. And this is why, you know, having these kind of premium, very different art styles is is a good idea for them. And it kind of expands their their law in as much as that they don't have any, but now you can imagine these spells. If we're taking the premise that this game is about planeswalkers slinging the ideas of spells at each other. If you have a swan song, the only swan song we got was the Theros one with the kind mm. of ethereal uh, bird on it. And now we have one with a literal swan. You know, swan. Just, yeah. it, gives you, it gives you just a different sort of feeling, a different resonance with the spells and what they're trying to say and what they're trying to do. Yeah, exactly. um, and and this, this one for me, this might be your favourite. This might this is my least favourite out of the five. Mm. And even even saying that from like a just a personal, like, would I play with these? Maybe not point of view. It's, they still have a lot of value. They still have a lot of value for what they're trying to do with them. And I think it's really cool. Yeah. Well, the thing is, when you're looking at, like, I've got them directly next to the lightning bolts. And yes, there is a stark contrast in the simplicity, like the traditional efforts compared to these new, I say new, obviously, they're still doing like 90s artwork, but these big, bold, striking colours that we don't, we're not used to. You can see there might be, you know, they might be catering to different people. Um, as a curiosity, mm. Andy, um, how many different types of bird are mentioned in Magic Cards? Oh, I did see this on the outline. Yeah, I'm, yeah, going yeah. To, I'm going to see if I can remember. I'm going to take a punt at 30. 30? Okay. okay, right. So one second. I'm going to have to take a deep breath, okay? Because these are all the different types of bird that are mentioned in Magic. All right. Peacock, Woodpecker, Vulture, Chicken, Falcon, Crane, Eagle, Heron, Raptor, Albatross, Peregrine, Thrush, Buzzard, Crow, Sparrow, Condor, Swan, Kestrel, Pigeon, Mower, Owl, Goose, Gull, Shrike, Kingfisher, Rooster, Jay, Raven, Kite, Parrot, Loon, Urn, Turkey, Comorant, Osprey, Whippoorwill, and Hoopo. <laughs> 38 different types of birds oh, well and they're done. all just birds clap 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 so why the hell have we got all these different types of dog Andy? oh is this is a long-winded way of you complaining about not no having no different- no um it was basically it was as i was going through the list it just got more and more ridiculous so i had to write them down and i was like it's 38 i've got to see if i can do it in one breath um but, but, but they're yeah, not okay. These aren't creature types. No, I know, I know. What I love is the fact they can do such a varied selection of them um, right. and still have them all under the same and feel fine. Um, quick, quick, quick. The only thing I want to say about the back of this is um, if they do, if they've done this with birds, what other what other animals that could we do this with um, insects? I reckon we could do insects quite comfortably. And you could do it as a. Um, what I'd love to see is I'd love to see you know when you get like butterflies and stuff and you put them in picture frames. Mm. I'd like to see that kind of style for insects, as if it was like you've gone out and you've gone and researched for them for a study. Rather than it, you know, being just there's 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 a there's an ant over there mm-hmm. on the branch. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so you mean like it's almost like you've opened up like a like a biology book? Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was trying to find a word for it. It's literally just an animal encyclopedia. Um, there yeah. is another word for it. Um, horses. You could do. You could do like nightmare, timber mare. You've got um the crested sun mare. Um, you've got the sure. crow. And um, How many some... of those? Well, do you only need five. Like... This is the thing. You only need five iconic. Do you need a secret like... layer for them? They would, no, 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 they, no, would, they would need a secret layer for it, right? No, no. So... Yeah, exactly. This is my thing. I'm just basically looking at if they've done birds. What other animals are they likely that they could possibly do? Fish. They could easily do fish. There's loads of different. You could do Mystic Remora, obviously, as a fish. fish. Yeah. yeah. Um, apes is another one that you got. You got curd ape. You've got the um the other old school ape that kills um artifacts. They like. Can I tell you a deep? Is... Can I tell you a secret? Go 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 ahead. Yeah. And it's not like we're recording this for the world to hear. Anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apes are my least favorite creature in magic. Really? Oh, how do you feel about like the, the see... gibbon, like the arboreal grazer from? Um... No, yeah, you don't like that. No, no. no? None of them. <laughs> okay. None of them. The well, only one. The, reason? the only no, the only one I can get away with is the most recent ape from um, Kong, Kong, the court. Kogler. Yeah, Kogler. Yeah, yeah. Because he's like cause he's King Kong, right? Ho- Kogler, I just well, yeah. think I just think it's so boring and weird any any magic ip and this is not just magic the gathering but like the you have the ape men in um, princess mononoke for example that that tale. oh i suppose yeah yeah, yeah. Any, any magic fantasy world which has monkeys or apes i'm just like oh it just turns me off i don't know why it's just it really... magic and evolution to you don't necessarily that's the explanation to evolution was magic obviously <laughs> Um, no, I just don't know, man. I just they just don't do it for me. No, no, they it's just interesting. Don't do it. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. It's, it's good to know that certain things have naturally, without even knowing necessarily particularly why, rub you up the wrong way. And obviously, this is something that magic sets have to pan to. I'm the same with things like horses. Like, don't take like the bartering, the bartered cow, for example, whatever it was. I was like, why is there a literal just a cow in the set? <laughs> like, I know, I know it's for Jack and the Beanstalk, but it's just a cow. Like, yeah. who cares? Um, I know. Again, it's that thing of world building compared to having the most amazing, impressive. Everything's a lightning dragon kind of. You you know, I get it. Yes, I get yes, it. yes. I get it. I think um, I, I mean they work in some worlds. I yeah. just, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Anyway, right. So from something a bit more traditional to something very off the wall. Um, full sleeves, the tattoo pack secret. Ooh, word. baby, this right? is my favorite one. Yeah, I thought it would be. I thought it would be. Ooh. Now, so now, if when I was raging earlier about naming conventions, mm-hmm. oh, we've come full circle. We've got there, baby. We've got there. Full, full sleeve. Sleeves. There's already a pun there. Every single card is a pun. Oh, it's great. Yeah. This is this is I can I yeah soup. Uh, this is me. I'm I'm eating this out of a bowl. Oh, out of a bowl. Delicious. Oh. Oh. I know that was a slurp, wasn't it? Sorry. That was a, <laughs> right into the microphone there. Uh, oh, I could have been close to that. That air smile was a hate crime. That's what that was. <laughs> uh, well, the smile on my face lets me know that you need me. Um, uh-huh. so, so yeah, so, so Josh Howard, a prolific tattoo artist from America, has done all of the artworks for these, um, and these are some of the least traditional magic artworks I've ever seen. Um, and that is not to take anything away from them because they are beautiful. This is if someone said, came up to me and went. Controversy aside, what is a secret lair? I would show them this secret lair. Mm-hmm. Like this is just awesome. The card choices, the artwork, mm-hmm. the puns, mm-hmm. everything about it. And we talked about expanding lore, so um, I'll, I'll run through these ones. So you have spell pierce, blood artist, eternal witness, ink moth nexus, and pithing needle. All of these cards, to varying degrees, admittedly, because I know Pithing Needle is is kind of an outdated choice, maybe. But all of these cards see play in multiple well, formats. No, you can still play. You can still play. All needle. of these. Yeah, he's still painted. I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of these cards have um, played in different formats. All of these cards have been in dire need of some sort of reprint. Eternal Witness and Spell Pierce, maybe not quite so much, but Blood Artist is a really good example of a mm. card which really needed just, just you know, some fresh blood. Just everything, oh, pardon me, everything about them is just absolutely gorgeous. The Ink Moth Nexus um, shows uh, a moth, as you would. And it's, it's, as a lot of kind of fancy moths do, it has the skull motif on the back of it. But it also has the Phyrexian uh, symbols on its wings. Yeah. Uh, color palette, which again, pinks and yellows, which seems to be my favourite at the moment. Um, Blood Artist is literally uh, like an artist's um, colour. It's like uh, a little... Palette. It's a little My Chemical Romance vampire. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a little beret and, and a little... little yeah, the little... Yeah. Crying yeah. blood. Eye shadow. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. The whole thing is just genius and whilst individually the artworks i mean they're obviously phenomenal um they're not necessarily my favorite it took me a little time to come around to this as a whole even though it is my favorite um like spell pierce isn't necessarily really uh, my jam same. Um, spell pierce is my favorite by, by far so spell pierce is uh is shows kind of like a crazy wizard with like yeah. bug eyes and it's kind of coming out of a scroll and he's got like blue lightning shooting yeah. out around him yeah really cool the thing is um, they, could, they could have very easily made that come or goth that's one of those things I'm like, that's, 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 I know this is what, I know they're not going to do that. They're not going to move to that silly side of crazy wizards because they're just p- balmy. You know, they're a little bit touching the head, basically read their role and they're going senile. Um, you don't really see that kind of crazy wizard side as much. Um, sure. There seems to be a spectrum, right, with how they treat lore expansion. And I've, I've been using that in this episode kind of uh, loosely, actually, is, is that term. Because on one, one end of the spectrum, you have, say, something like the Thalia secret lair, where they had four Thalias. And they were all the same card, but all the artworks were different. And they mm. showed Thalia at lots of different points in her life. They weren't just all action shots. You know, some of it was her confronting the ch- uh, Church of Avacyn. Mm-hmm. Some of them were her lead- going into battle. Yeah, got trapped behind her. Yeah, exactly. exactly right. So they sh- that expands the lore because we see more of Thalia in situations which you would find her in. The other end of the spectrum is what I've been talking about today, where they've not necessarily expanded these in a story sense, but they've expanded the law of these uh, cards and these spells in a resonance sense. So the the Eternal Witness, for example, we've had a couple of artworks for it now. And this one is, I'd say, you kind of similar to it. It's got a very um, sort of like... Effect. It's got a, yeah, it's got a hood, it's got flowers and things, but the composition of it and the art style of it is very uh, like Tudor art. Like even the hand which she's holding the rose with, she's oh, got I her pink piece of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you'd find that on a lot of like a lot of paintings of people like Henry VIII or mm. uh, like uh, Queen Elizabeth, for example. And a lot of playing cards use a similar sort exactly, of thing. Exactly, yeah. yeah. On that art as well. Um, the resonance of these these cards which you have to them, like that's the expansion they're going for, and mm. that's why I really like them. They didn't just do, oh, it's a druid. And she looks a little bit creepy because she brings back things back from the dead. Oh, mm. it's an artist, and it's kind of vampire-y, so I just make it look creepy. Mm. Like they've they've really played on on how people yeah. feel about these cards, and I think that's just brilliant. Well, yeah, this is a very recognisable art style that is very mm-hmm. separate from magic. Typically, the fact that we're able to combine it, like last week we were talking about this idea of using Brazilian street art. Like this is close. We're we're getting there. This is like like 
artworks that, as you say, are very striking. People recognize them and it's not usually tied in any way, shape or form to magic. And you're able to integrate them in a way that makes it work. Um, and mm. the other thing about these is the three of them have uh, flavor text and the flavor text are also new, also quite clever. Um, oh, yes. A little bit hint, hint, nudge, nudge. So go and, yeah, go and have a look at them. These are one of those ones that I reckon it's like Marmite. Either you'll love them or you hate them. Um, and I think I think all of the discourse, though, that I've seen, because you're right, you're 100% right. All of the discourse I've seen, though, of people who say they don't like them have all gone but I like the fact that they've given this art style to the people who like them. Exactly. And that seems to be the levelling out of people are still really pissed about Secret Lairs as a product, as yeah. we previously said. But a lot of players, uh, both pro players, a lot of players casual, but they have a lot of sort of voice in the community. A, the kind of tide of opinion seems to be, okay, I don't like these artworks. But then, do you know what? That's just saved me 30 quid yeah. buying the Secret yeah. Lair. I'm glad other people have them. Yeah, yeah, and I think the only way you can fail with the Secret Lair is to make something boring, something that mm-hmm. people... Do, which is where I can see with the ornithological studies, I can see from an artistic point of view, especially some like yourself that's pushing more to this this galvanised, like it's, it's, it's a different style of, of artwork. I can see why they might not... Um, they might not be a highlight for you um, because but then like, you enjoy them, and then yeah, that's exactly. A good because thing, right? yeah, it's, I guess it's almost like when you when you're so not used to something traditional, traditional becomes untraditional. You know, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I think yeah, these these are by far away the thing the most striking artwork wise, even compared to the lightning bolts, because the lightning bolts you you they look cool. Um, but we've seen that kind of style of card before, um, even recently with the integration of um, of Ikoria style artworks with the comic style. Like these aren't something that we're not used to. These the, the, these um, full sleeve ones. These are yeah completely different to what we're used to. And the fact that they're willing to go that far. Um, and also, if you're looking across all these diff- different products, none of them are very similar, which is why I reckon they drop them all at the same kind of time. They all seem to cater for different. Very people. different. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very cool. Uh, so moving on to the last one. Um, the last one is Can You Feel With A Heart Of Steel? Um, mm. Which naming convention wise, I tried to look it up, it doesn't come from anything, it's not a quote from anything. Um, in my head, when I first saw it, I thought it might have been from The Wizard lyric of Oz. or something like that, yeah, that's what yeah. I thought as well, but I couldn't see anything off my initial, and I'm not going to go trawling through um, through the internet to satisfy my own need to pull people up on their naming conventions. Um, mm. And I think it works fine. Um, so this is three. So um, we haven't actually talked, like, we didn't mention it necessarily, but obviously the Lightning Bolt um, is a playset of four, uh, the Bird one's five cards, the Planeswalker's one of four cards, and then obviously the um, the uh joshua howard's uh ones are five cards this is the mm-hmm. only one that's three right so this is three iconic artifact creatures um they've released walking ballista dark steel colossus and arc bound ravager ravager now i understand that dark steel colossus may not be as competitive as the other two um i have a personal soft spot for it because it's the first rare that i ever opened um from a pack that i bought um in shop back 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 in the day um and so it will always live with me as this card that's unbelievable. And it's amazing now that so when they did the reprint in M10, I was disappointed. It took this iconic card that I know wasn't very playable and it made it much more available to people and it's still not really playable. And it kind of just kicked mm. me a little bit. So I was like, no, don't take my my, 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 my card that, <laughs> that I've had for years. I don't just make a new shinier version that doesn't have new artwork. I mean, don't get me wrong, the, old, the old artwork's beautiful. Like the way oh, the, little, the, the, cool. the, note, the motes that are going around it. Um, saying that, this new artwork, um, this is the probably the closest I've actually come to wanting to buy a secret lair. I need a walking ballista for one deck. I've play, already played Arcbound Ravager, but the old artwork, I don't really like it that much. Um, and I have a Dark Steel Colossus in a Rakdos deck. So these are the only ones where I actually could reasonably play all three cards and not feel like I'd be overextending. Um, like the five, like say the, the Joshua Howard ones, like I don't necessarily replay really Pithy Needle or Ink Moth Nexus or anything like that. I mean, yeah, okay, I'd probably play a couple of them, but this is the only one that I think I'd definitely play all three of them. Um, saying that, artist wise they are typically using all their debut artists as well they're using again this full art um white uh white text um full art full art effect um, like tran- transparent text transparent box. text box thank yeah, you yeah, yeah. Good, good words nathan well done yeah. well i mean it's <laughs> so i'm sure there are official names for all these different mm. art styles but god if i know what they mm. are like. <laughs> um, so the big thing about these i didn't notice so i was looking back through all the secret layers the the, re- the reason i really like these transparent um, boxes is because it makes the power and toughness pop more Obviously, on the lightning bolts, we don't notice it's not a creature. Um, I noticed as we're looking through the constellations, and you have the gold, the gold power and toughness box in the bottom that pops. That I feel like frames that together much better than not having that extra little bit of border at the bottom, which obviously annoys me a bit on the lightning bolt side. Again, nitpicking on aesthetics, um, but I do like this effect of where you have that little that little 
the little box at the bottom it ties it all together it looks very cool all three of the artworks are really striking again these are going to be in foil um and looking at the artworks they're probably going to be super shiny <laughs> um, i think that's fine though like art band Rav- ravager was was a staple of of modern for a long absolutely, time absolutely yeah um, and if you're playing that deck, you're probably not gonna have four of this particular printing. No, no. I so. mean, if you buy four four of these, then yeah, cool. Go ahead, be, be, be a big dick gunslinger. But um, yeah, I mean, so Dan, Danny Miller did the um did the artbound ravager. He does like he's known for comic prints um and that kind of style. Um, it again, it feels similar off the back of the Corio, where they've just kind of gone right. How can we push this kind of art style into other into other directions? Bad Flip Productions Inc. did the Walking Ballista. Um, that's mm-hmm. actually Ken uh, Christensen. Um, he does lots of um, Disney and Nintendo work, lots of gaming work. So that's why it has. It kind, kind of, of shows big, here. Like this, yeah. this has a very sort of like Gundam mech suit kind of feel. Yeah, kind of Transformers as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So none of them have worked on Magic product before. Um, I don't. One thing I really like about the fact that we've we've been saying this for the last couple of weeks. That there's so many different artists that will get in on um on exclusive anc- ancillary products or or, or promotion promos like this. Yeah, because realistically, they might be busy doing other work. They might be working with studio gaming studios or doing shitloads of um um you know well building work for for D or whatever like people obviously that uh, have sketchbooks and good good sketchbooks will be used in so many capacities so they might only be able to do one or two artworks here or there i really hope they continue um and it might be a way to integrate some of these artists into the game proper um just do a few here and there maybe you know for a couple of iconic cards um but the fact they're integrating all these different styles in like looking across all five of them there are so radically different one by one um, that as much as it did feel a little bit like they were just kind of force feeding you five things going, hey, here, have stuff, have product, you'll like it. Uh, and I was actually going like, oh, no, look, we've gone in all of these different directions. Hope, like we, are, we, we know that all of these products will be for someone. Um, so whoever you are out there, maybe one of these is for you. If not, hey, look, at least, at least we're trying. And they are, as I said, pushing the sure. envelope in various well, different directions. If there's one thing we kind of learned from our conversation with Orthos Mike last week is that you can't completely divorce the idea of how something is distributed versus what it actually is. So mm. you like the art styles or you don't like the art styles, that's still going to be tied up uh, with how they're distributed to you and in what products they're in and stuff like that. Mm. The thing that we need to remember, though, is that you can appreciate these artworks without necessarily having to care about the cardboard that they're printed on. And that is something which is kind of odd to say when you're talking about Magic the Gathering. But, you know, when we were talking last week about the fact that, you know, great artworks in Magic have kind of gone unnoticed by a large number of the player base because they're at the front of the booster pack and not at the back of the booster pack. People might immediately, if they don't like secret layers, or they kind of got overwhelmed by the fact that there were, you know, almost 15 cards dropped in a day that they probably won't be able to buy. Yeah, and it's right. for, like, pretty bad <laughs> feelings for. They might just kind of go, oh, well, I don't even like the fucking art style either. And yeah. it's like, that's a valid... If you don't like the art style, perfectly fine. But you need to... You need Separate to separate that from the other issues that you have with the product. Take the rough with the smooth, right? Use yeah. use the fact that you either do or don't like the art styles to maybe fuel your passion for the fact that this product maybe should be more available, or fuel yeah. your idea that maybe that this product should be the way that it is, and that these are premium art styles that mm-hmm. you don't necessarily have to open up in a regular booster if you don't want them. Yeah. This is the problem with a lot of those. Um, what we were saying about Courier is that some people really didn't like either of the other art styles but if they're in the booster packs that you have to open then maybe yeah. something yeah you know. if you if you open up a brocos and you're like cool i've got a bro- oh yeah i've got that uh, uh, i've got the rarer artwork that i don't want oh yeah great. yeah Which, I, you know, I used, I, I used to do first world problems of opening up foils of things i mean like but i didn't want it in foil and it was like oh you've got a more expensive card or you're complaining i'm like yeah but it's really annoying to trade <laughs> like you know I mean, yeah. Yeah. When the constellations came out for uh, Theros, I had two different people say to me, "Do you want the constellation um, Heliod? Because I just want the regular one." I didn't have the regular one to trade. I would have done that and more. Um, yeah, it really enough. Like, like the constellation one was actually easier to get hold of initially than it was to get hold of the regular Sun Crown. Um, hmm. Because I, I was going to buy one, it was actually two pounds cheaper to get the constellation artwork one, which is weird. And actually, <laughs> weird enough, I held back because I actually preferred the sun crowned one, the regular version. Really? No, I um, see. I prefer the no, no, um, yeah. if, if if all of the cards in my deck were constellations, amazing. Um, but the thing is, I like the white um, text so much that it would make me get annoyed at every other card in my deck because it didn't have it. <laughs> so it, it, it's one of these things of I don't want to get something really, really good to make me not like everything else as much as I do. Um, but yeah, I mean, saying like, I, I think the whole point about these is are they are they are first and foremost a premium product. Like, mm-hmm. not everyone goes out and buys gold top milk. You know, some people buy skimmed, um, and it's just a matter of what's being catered towards you. And as much as I don't want to fan the flames of of <laughs> of of um of the current community 
speaking out in uproar um there is there is a degree of like i mean if it's not if it's not made for you it's not made for you and it's a very pessimistic view to think oh they're just trying to shut us up by giving us extra stuff i'm like no it's just the business model to make things that people want to buy um and again if you want to avoid it avoid it but there is at least at least try and dissect what's going on behind the products and what they're trying to integrate into it because it means that you might not be so shocked a few days out, a few years down the line when certain things are changing you're like when did this start and you go well when you're not paying attention we released all of these secret layers like mm. if you look at the difference between like the Hector um, Ortis um, artwork for the Dark Steel Colossus compared to say the Eternal Witness artwork, um, they are so radically different, and they both to me don't necessarily look like typical Magic: The Gathering artworks. That is something that may over the next five ten years that might change. As we were saying last week, there is a target, there is that middle bullseye, but who's to say that bullseye might not move a little bit going forwards? Um, I guess it all depends on what can be done, like digitally artwork, um, digital well, artwork, I suppose... and stuff like that. In the in the grander scheme of Magic: The Gathering, um, I think it's probably it's it it was already removed from what the game was originally, and now it's actually coming back to center. I know there's a lot of commentators that are saying that the art styles and the kind of mix up of art styles that are coming out now actually feels like Magic from '95. Yeah, like the yeah. fact that it that it is all so different, um, which is I don't know, man. Like I I I like hodgepodge. I like see now. I mean, I know I, you, you like. I like. You know, you have um like a like like an idea of like homogenizing things. Like, like you say, no, 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 like no, 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 no. I no. I what I like <laughs> no because because if you look at my tokens you box, I have wrong, I have some I have some wildly different tokens. What I appreciate is the fact that homogenization allows there to be a central line which can be deviated from. And I think if the if the homogenized artwork is good enough and is a strong enough style then it kind of makes the game uh, kind of stronger. I see what it's I, a foundation, basically. Yeah, what yeah. I don't like is when a art style for a set or something restricts people from what they want to do, which is why I'm so happy that nowadays you have that straight, strong through line. Again, we spoke about this last week. We have that center of um, target bullseye, which most magic art follows, but then individual artists can maybe deviate from that slightly maybe one artist does something radically different and it stands out in a set maybe we get these different skins maybe we get a secret layer that's different and i like that um i do like things having a unified aesthetic in my sort of decks for example so i do i i do like well my lands i like having a unified aesthetic or like my tokens i like having the correct token Mm. for something because i think it it ties in together but that's not necessarily to say i want all my tokens to have the same art no of course i do yeah i I do know what you mean you can't you need to know the rules before you can break them. And obviously, yes, if, they don't that's have, my th- yeah. if they don't have that established rule, then it, it is basically bedlam. Um, Which is what was wrong. I say wrong. Um, what I think was wrong in, in early magic well, is yeah. that because they didn't have any rules. Yeah, there some was people a unified like this. direction was there. Yeah, it was just, it wasn't, it wasn't, oh, there's nice artworks that kind of deviate and pop. It's just like, well, what the fuck is this card game? It's, it's chaos. Um, yeah. And I think now they're they're having the best of both worlds and they're having their cake and eating it. I wish they had this fucking golden age for the story. I really do. Um, Because our art is going through something of a renaissance and Uh, the the story's story's smoldering fire pit. Do you know what's funny is that obviously we've got to segue slightly at the end here. There there is a degree of... um, Art's a lot easier, I feel like, to, to digesting-wise. It's a lot easier to put people on a scale 1 to 10 because it doesn't take much investment from them. All they have to do is look at it. Yeah. Story has to be digested over a long period of time. It has to be understood, appreciated. It has to be compelling. There are so many things. And I know over the years we've said that, uh, over the years, over the <laughs> the last like, six months of us um, doing this, but also we've been talking about this for years ahead, um, going back. Um, there is a degree of it's a lot harder to unify opinion on a story. It takes a lot more effort to do. I say that I'm not saying writing uh, writing a book is harder than um, painting a picture. What I'm saying is it's harder to digest from an audience point of view. Um, it's much easier to convey things in a simple artwork whether it you know pushes people away or, or doesn't and i can see why that might be something they're more willing to lean into because it is something mm-hmm. they can give diversity to without it like you can't write say horny fan fiction magic and then thriller fa- um, thriller magic and the buddy cop magic you can't do all these different styles of um of, of literature of literature which is why a lot of the books came across as being a little bit kiddie because it has to pander to a certain audience whilst also fitting in certain less like more tongue in cheek like there are so many sentences you could pull out of magic and go like yeah try and say that with a straight face as an actor and yeah fair enough i can see why it's a bit it i think yeah right you know i think i think you're right and with literature 
there's a lot more of a sense of ownership over characters which individual players or kind of swathes of the community might have and and characterizations and things like that which you still get in visual art but the thing with visual art is that it's much easier for someone to kind of dismiss something if they don't like it they just go i don't like that representation of of nissa and it only took them five seconds to look at it and to engage with it to go i don't like that whereas with a book or a story or a whole narrative arc that lasts a year they have to deal with that characterization all the way through imagine if you missed that one thing and it turned that person away from the entire book so like oh mm -hmm. i didn't like i didn't like your decision on that character for that one thing Mm -hmm. yeah and i think they've learned Um, their lesson doing things like the retconning of the nissa um chandra thing and where they go oh we really piss people off whenever we make decisions about these things maybe we'll stop making decisions about these kinds of things well, I think yes. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, they still need to make a decision, right? Because it's still their IP yeah. that they, they need to drive. They still need to be individual, believable stories that you can quote unquote invest in, even if it's superfluously. But, but I think I just think yeah. I mean, not to get back into the, the whole thing. I just mm. think they've recently made decisions of characterization in the narratives that aren't believable because they're just trying to drive things like a business. Yeah, Whereas right. with the artwork, they've given artists their fucking you know mm. realm to walk. And they've done their job as artists and they've done it well. And they should just do that for the authors. Yeah. Just let them do it. I would be interested like, to stop see... trying to curtail it. Yeah, I would be interested to see off the back of what we talked about last week of the fact that we are one of the few um like games that doesn't have like a um an act like a, a, a series or a film or something, you know. There isn't there isn't another outlet beyond the game. Um mm. and I feel like I would like I'd like to see them try some multimedia uh, magic work um, and then maybe come back to books but I worry that if they go there and it's successful we literally will never go back to books. But then also if they do go there mm. and are successful I think I'd be a little bit happier than if they really really push just to have a marginal success with the um with the story lit- literally wise. Cuz I know that they can do enough in 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 the set and I know we can pick out enough and I know Theros did feel flatter but I mean, I guess we'll just have to see going forward. It's always one of the things. It's, it's disappointing not to get more of something that we like, but obviously from their point of view, it might not necessarily be as worth this, which obviously the subject of the of the matter is that this kind of diversity and t- artistic direction is something I am lauding all day long. Carry yeah. on. Please, please don't stop doing this. And I don't I, mind you throwing five at me. You can throw 10 at me. As long as it doesn't run your business into the ground, keep trying things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think this idea of doing alternate artworks for cards, which people can get in that center of target artwork style is definitely a smart decision because it stops detractors and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say they're wrong for thinking this but people who say things like that doesn't look like a magic card or i don't understand why i have to play with godzilla or with a transformer why can't i play with a magic looking thing Hmm. because now they can and they people can have both or one or the other and it might mean that we have to suffer if suffering is what you think it is, we might have to suffer secret layers and mm. other type of high-end products. But do remember, they are putting a lot of this in the boosters. The collector's boosters, whilst that the, the treatment of boosters is a whole other concept, mm. collector's boosters are still relatively accessible to people mm. and relatively able to be cracked open. Yeah. Are these so the price it's a good complete time. range? Like if, as long as you're getting these under, I'd say most of these, as long as you're getting them around 35, 40 quid, I wouldn't be too upset. Like mm. I don't know if it's going to be happy. I don't realistically know like how inflated the market will put them, but um, they're all scared. They're all uh, priced between thirty and forty. So I don't think that's unreasonable. Like as long as you're not doing cards like Fetchlands, which you have to chase to the ends of the world. As long as you're doing things that will be sought after by a select few people, otherwise you can just kind of go, yeah, whatever. The problem with the fetch lands is so many people are like, but I really, really need them. Yeah, I can't yeah. afford that. None of these would you turn around and go, oh my god, I need that so much that I, I need to go and mortgage my house. Yeah. yeah. The so, planeswalkers that they that they released for this set are all relatively affordable planeswalkers outside yeah. of this art style. I think Golgari Queen's the most um, uh, field researcher might be just because it's um, played less and it's older, but I think sure. Golgari Queen might be the most expensive out of all of them, and that's not even. But bad. this is it. You've hit the nail on the head. The, the Fetchlands. The reason it was such a, a huge backlash for the Fetchlands secret layer is because although it is a secret layer, it's artworks for cards that already exist mm. and a premium product and there was only five of them so they're kind of pitched as being right. a collectible but and who plays people, just one fetch land you play a who play plays just one fetch land you, and the artworks and were beautiful so you really want them. you really want them it was just and it was just everything about it was just yeah. like okay this is yeah, this is what you didn't need to do yeah um okay we're coming up anyway, to time, yeah, so. i like how we said we weren't going to talk about it and well <laughs> so we're not talking about it i just but. think i just think maybe like there are other people that are more eloquent and have a lot more um considered opinion about it I than agree, we do yeah. not because yeah. we don't have opinions 
but because it's not we an avenue are in a, that we pursue often we don't need to look at this that side of it yeah this much. space is a space looking at the flavor of the cards and at yeah. the artistic the stuff artistic which is quality, also needed exactly. because at no point really during the discourse with the fetchland stuff there was maybe for every 20 page paragraph a uh, 20 page essay as to why the fetchlands were terrible as a product which completely valid if that's your opinion there was maybe two lines going oh but also the artworks fucking kick ass like and that's the space that i think we need to occupy we're not above talking about the controversy because there is controversy and it's valid Mm. but i think we just need to we just need to be one of the voices kind of going yep that's all there but also let's let's actually look at cards yeah exactly Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 um okay cool um i have nothing much more to say about these secret layers um i do however have a bit of advice for people Oh, okay, I like this. Um, if you're playing via webcam, if you're playing EDH or any other kind of magic via webcam, and you're using Discord on your phone, and you're using Bluetooth headphones to connect to your phone, if you go to the toilet, don't put your headphones down on the table and then take your phone to the toilet. Because your phone <laughs> will disconnect from your headphones, and then your entire playgroup will hear you peeing with your phone in your pocket. Nice. I like that. That's clever. Good. Nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a bit of practical advice for all there you uh, spell that's, table virtual. Yeah, that's EDH that moment that in um, Into the Spider-Verse where Peace Fire is just like, nah, just put talc in your suit. That's all that matters, mate. You get sued. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's practical. I, uh, <laughs> I was going to the toilet. I was going to the magic game. Oh, hand. obviously, yeah. <laughs> and I just heard this laughing coming from my pocket. And I realised what had happened, and I picked up my phone, and I could just hear. Oh, it was uh, you! My... It wasn't someone yeah. else. Oh, that's no, amazing. it was me. Oh, I, I could it. just hear my playgroup <laughs> just crying with laughter, and it was because my toilet is more than the range of my headphones away from the table which I play at. So my headphones are disconnected from my phone, and so my phone was now the speaker on Discord and the headphones, which was in my pocket as I was going to the toilet. So that was good. Um, oh, I was playing with people I knew rather than people on something like Play DH, which was at least a saving grace. But yeah. there we are. Good. Uh, the trials yeah. and tribulations of home magic. Um, mm. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. Oh, so, on, on that light note, thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like um, from our point of view, I don't know about you, but it looks like things might be lessening up over the next coming month or so. So there may be a light at the end of the horizon. End of the horizon? End of the tunnel? On the horizon? Great words fucking amazing was well, as, as far as uh, <laughs> as far as lockdown goes or? yeah yeah in terms of like, yeah it's, potentially it's looking, it's looking potentially so you know uh, always always stay safe don't be reckless for god's mm-hmm. sake we're, we're fixing the problem don't don't fuck it up before we've actually finished fixing it yeah don't time. don't cripple it in the first way yeah at the same time it does look like um it's like you can get hold of these cards and should potentially be able to sleeve them up in person at some point soon mm-hmm. um, but otherwise yeah. keep well and keep safe and keep happy people Absolutely. And we've got a few exciting episodes coming up in the near future. Again, don't want to say anything in case they don't happen, because in, with this business, you sort of put all your eggs in one basket yeah, and then you get kind of screwed over. We do. We do indeed. Um, not literally. Please don't get excited for that. Um, <laughs> if you haven't yet listened to it, we've mentioned it several times in this episode. Please go back to last week's episode, uh, interview with Vorthos Mike. It was tremendously fun recording with him, mm. and as well as talking about alternate artworks and having someone way more in the know than us yeah. kind of school us and all of that there's also quite a few uh, magic story bombs that were dropped mm. that if you haven't listened to that episode i don't think you're going to find these takes in very many other places just yet so if you want to yeah. be ahead of the curve with some conspiracy theories if you want to don that tin hat um go and check us out mm-hmm. we have had an explosion of interaction and engagement on our social media and we want you to be a part of it as well so if you have not done so yet our twitter is at mt flavoring go there hit that follow button. You can listen to all of our garbage as we spew it out about uh, magic flavor. You can get in contact with us about things that you want to talk about. You can hear about all the kind of conspiracy theories that we've been hearing and any sort of new artwork that we're really excited about. We will be sharing on there as well, as well as our usual hypothetical polls that we'd like your engagement on. So uh, again, if you haven't done so yet, hit the follow button. Otherwise, it just kind of proves that you don't really like us and uh, you probably wasted an hour and a half listening to us just now. So there you go. (laughs) You're Um, (laughs) Your, your fault. Nine, uh-huh. 90 minutes you're not getting back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, Nathan, do you have anything final to say? No, nah, that's it. That's it. That's, that's, that's Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> our personal Twitters are uh, at Andy Manface and Nathan Yaw. At the Fox in the Moon. Emails go to MT Flavoring. As always, guys, as ever, thank you so much for listening. This has been Magic the Flavoring. We'll see you soon.